If you're looking for a quick and easy tutorial on how to set up a speedrun timer, you have come to the right place. Down in the description, you will find a link to the latest version of LiveSplit. Here is the website, and download the latest version of LiveSplit. It will come as a zip file, so of course make sure to unzip that. Do not try to open any files directly in the zip. Put it in a folder on your desktop or wherever you prefer. These are all of the files, and the one that you'll be concerned with is LiveSplit.exe. And you will see this little timer pop up with the 0.00. .00. So if you're just starting out, there are really just three components you need to worry about. Your splits, your layout, and your hotkeys. Let's start out with the splits. This is how you keep track of the progress of a speedrun that you're doing. You can edit your splits by right-clicking and going to Edit Splits. You'll see this window pop up and it will allow you to enter in custom information. So you can enter in your game name, let's say for example, Pokemon Omega Ruby, followed by the run category, let's say any percent. Below this is where you can enter in your actual split names. So for example, Roxanne is the first gym leader of Pokemon Omega Ruby. If you want to add more splits, you just hit insert below. So to make a full set of splits, you can just insert a bunch of segments and then just rename them as needed. Here's split number two, three, four, five, etc. And of course you would name them not just by number two, three, four, five, but whatever you want those splits to be called. However, this process can be a bit tedious and you may not be sure exactly what you want to make for the different splits. Fortunately, many popular speedrun games already have splits available in their communities. Speedrun.com is a great landing point for these kinds of resources. For example, this is The Simpsons Hit and Run. If you go down to Resources, you'll find at the bottom that there are pre-made splits. So you don't have to sit there and name every single split if you just want to dive right in. Another common place to find splits is in a community's Discord server. For example, Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire has a Discord server for 3DS Pokemon speedruns. You can find this by going to the Discord section listed on speedrun.com. As you see, I'm in this Discord server, and under the Resources section, you can find a set of blank splits. What you're looking for is a file that is .lss. That means that it is a set of splits. Let's download this example file. As you can see in the live split folder, I made a splits folder, and that is where I put the blank set of splits that I saved from that Discord server. All you have to do is take this and drag it onto live split, and it'll open up. You can also right click open splits from file if you don't have the window already open. As you can see, this is a perfectly fine set of splits, and if you'd like to edit or add any, you could just right click edit splits, and this window will pop up. You could see all of these splits for Pokemon Alpha Sapphire. If you want to add one before Rival 1, for example, all you have to do is click Insert Above. And if there are segments that you don't want, you can just remove segment. If you don't want a Petalburg split, for example, you just remove segment. Likewise, you can also add pictures for every split. Not every set of default splits will have pictures. Fortunately, this one does. All you have to do is double click the icon box and then you can select an image to go there. You can even put a GIF if you want, but it may get a little laggy from my experience. There is more that you could do in the splits editor, but that's all that you really need to know just to get a run going. Once you're done, you can click OK and right click Save Splits. If you'd like to rename the file or make a copy, you can click Save Splits As and save a new location. So just a reminder, your splits are kept in a .lss file. You can usually find pre-made LSS files on Spiron.com in the resources section of a game or in a community Discord server. And if there isn't a pre-made .lss file, you can just make them on your own by right-clicking Live Splits, go to Edit Splits, and make them on your own. The second piece that you need to get started is your layout. Now, technically, you don't really need a layout. However, if you'd like to customize the way that your splits look, you're going to want to dive into this. Right-click Live Split and go to Edit Layout. This will open up the Layout Editor, which shows the different components that Live Split displays. As you can see right now, we have the title, the splits, the timer, and then Previous Segment. These buttons on the left allow you to either add a component, which you can see all of these different options in these submenus, remove a component that is the one that you currently have selected, and move components up and down as needed. To edit all of this, go to Layout Settings. 
Once you open up layout settings, you will see a tab for each component listed in layout editor. As you can see here, we have title, splits, timer, and previous segment. We also have a layout tab, which is just a general tab for selecting your font that you want to use for the entire layout, what colors you'd like to use for your current timer, and more. Now, there are a lot of options in this menu. And honestly, the best way to learn a lot of this is just to go with trial and error and see what you like, because a lot of this is just aesthetics and what you prefer your splits to look like. But I'll go through a quick rundown on some of the basics. Starting from the top, we have background. As you can see, it's currently just a solid black background. Now, you can either keep this or change the color. Just click this little square and you could just pick your color from here. As you can see, this is what picks the colors. And as you can see here, this bar chooses the transparency of the color. Alternatively, you can also do a gradient, either vertical or horizontal, and just pick the two colors you want to make a gradient of. My favorite option is choosing an image. Just click the square, find an image in your library, and from there, you can adjust the blur and opacity as you would like. Just drag this bar, and it'll adjust your image accordingly. The next important setting that we have are the fonts. So pretty straightforward, you can just go into your font library and pick a font that you want. Play around with the anti-aliasing and drop shadows and see what looks good to you. And then we have the colors. These are the colors that the timer will display based off of your run. So to start off, we have best segment or also known as a gold split. That means that is the fastest that you have completed a certain segment in. So for example, if you get a gold split on world 1-1 of a Mario game, that is the fastest that you've done that ever. You can either make this gold, make it another color, or make it a flashing rainbow color. And I really like that. That's the one that I use personally. And then you have, if you're ahead on your current run, gaining time or losing time. And then if you're behind on your current run, gaining time or losing time. So these colors will be what your timer is colored in that set of circumstances. A lot of speedrunners are a bit uh, demotivated when they see the red. So uh, what some people will do is make this a blue or a pink. I do pink myself because it helps keep the morale up. Sometimes you see a red timer and you get a bit discouraged by that, but that may not bother you. So see what works for you. There are other options here, but I wouldn't worry about them until you get a few runs in. Then feel free to play around more with your layout. And this really goes for all of the other tabs. Just try it out. You don't really have to worry about it too much on your first runs, but once you get comfortable with live split and the run that you're doing, this can be a pretty fun process. So for example, for the title bar, as you can see right now, it is just a black to gray vertical gradient strip. I don't like that personally. I would go to plain and make it completely transparent so that you could see the image. If you don't like that, then don't do it. Try it out. Experiment and see what works for you. For example, there's an option to show your attempt counter. As you can see right now, it is at zero since this is a new set of splits. I also don't like that. I don't think it's obvious what that number means to someone that is just coming into my stream. So I wouldn't show that, but you may like that. So experiment and see what works for you. Most options in these menus are pretty self-explanatory, and if they're not, they're usually pretty apparent in what they change. For example, if you're editing the icons on your splits, and you're not sure exactly what the icon shadows look like, bring up the size and turn off the shadows and see the difference that it makes. Do you not want to show so many splits? Take off some. There's really a lot of customization here and I could go on for so long talking about it all, but if you're just starting out, it's really not all that important. If you guys would like to see an advanced live split tutorial where I go through every single possible customization option, then let me know and I will do that. Also, I'm sure some of you are wondering what is previous segment since live split just added that in. That just means how much time did you gain or lose in your last split. So for example, if I reached the grunt split and in my rival one split, I lost three seconds, the previous segment would show minus three seconds. So that's our layout. It's simple, but go nuts. Have fun with it. Add sound effects for when you get a gold split. Or add in your sum of best, which is which is all of your gold splits put together. It gives you an idea of how good can I be at this game. Either way, once you're done, click OK. Now, layout files are LSL files. So the split files are LSS and the layout files are LSL. You can right click and go to save layout as to make a new copy of your layout. 
And if you're just saving an already existing layout, you can just right click save layout. The final component of your timer that you're concerned with is your hotkeys. These are the buttons that you're going to press to control your timer. Right click live split and go to settings. As you can see here, there are lots of hotkeys that you can make and only a few that you really need to know. The first hotkey is your start slash split button. This is your most important button. A lot of people like to make it their spacebar since it is large and easy to tap. You will be clicking this button whenever your run starts or you finish another split. And that would also be the final split. So this one you're going to be using a lot. Next is the reset hotkey. This is when your run is dead and you need to completely kill the timer. And that's it. It goes back to zero, zero. After that is undo split. This is if you accidentally do one too many splits. It will just send you back a split. And then on the contrary is skip split. This is if you forget to do your current split and you need to skip to the next one. And then finally is the pause hotkey. This is usually not allowed depending on the game that you're running. But if you do need to pause, if you're practicing or whatever the reason may be, that is also a good hotkey to have. There are also two switch comparison hotkeys, but if you're just starting out, you shouldn't need to worry about these. The way that I like to do this since I have a numpad is to make my start split two, my reset button eight, my undo split one, my skip split three, and my pause split seven. This makes sense to me because I see the one, two, three on the numpad almost as a rewind, then play, then fast forward button on a remote control. This may not make sense to you, so do what works for you. Like I said, a lot of people like to use their spacebar for the start slash split button. So if that works for you, then go wild, go for it. Finally, something that may either be very useful or very not useful is global hotkeys. This will make sure that if you're tabbed into another program, Live Split will still detect that you hit a key. Likewise, you could also deactivate these same keys with other programs. So for example, if you have a Google document open and you press numpad 2 while on the Google Doc, not only will Live Split still register your numpad 2 as a hotkey starting your splits, but will also not enter the number 2 on the Google Doc. And the same would apply for any other key on your keyboard. To save this, all you have to do is click OK. You do not need to save any files. Once you do that, you are done. So that's it. That is the beginner live split tutorial. This is how to make a set of splits, a basic layout, and set your hotkeys. There are a lot of other fancy options and things that you could do with this program. However, you don't need to know it all at once, and there's already so much involved in learning a speedrun that I think it's best to keep the live split aspect of things simple until you get more comfortable with everything else going on. If you guys would like to see an advanced live split tutorial, please let me know in the comments section and I would love to make it for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this was helpful, definitely hit the subscribe button and please follow me on Twitch. I do a lot of speed runs and I would love to see you there. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.